There Why he is. You There's a tiny bear. You look a little extra like like a Swiffer today. Last day of Vloguary. Vloguary is over. Right, Pablo? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that's 28 vlogs, 28 episodes, 28 stories every day. I mean, wow, that was an entire, oh God, that's super low. That was an entire month of documenting every single day of my life. This was a huge challenge. You know, besides the need to film everything and edit everything on time and try to figure out a cohesive narrative to every single day, really the biggest challenge is figuring out that there is actually a story that happens in your life every single day. Even in the boring ones, something's going on. And I feel like if you don't want to take on a challenge like this yourself, you could probably do it as a writing exercise. Try to find some way to tell a story every single day for a month. So had some adventures, lost some weight, grew a beard, and uh, I feel like this whole experience has jump-started my creative energy. And I'm ready to start tackling some big projects outside of this place and finally get my creative gears in full force. Anyway, on Facebook, I asked you all to write me some questions to answer, and uh, looks like it's uh, Q&A time. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I'm going to start with two questions from Megan Elizabeth Alexander. One, who shot first? Why is that even a question? You trying to piss me off? Laugh it up, fuzzball. It was Han, by the way. The second question, is Rabbit really wise? Trust me, Rabbit is good, Rabbit is wise. Zeke Thomas, is Elon Musk a reptilian shapeshifter? At this point, isn't everybody a reptilian shapeshifter? Chris Jensen, pretzel or peanut M&Ms? I don't need sugar. Roger Randall. Oh, Roger Randall. I, I worked with him on one of my very first movies, Tremors 3. Uh, he asks, what other two people would make up your human centipede? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That wasn't my answer. Uh, I can think of two people. One who's made of air, the other one who's made of nothingness. You're a disgusting man. But later he asks, if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's a really, really tough one because uh, my top 10 favorite movies, some of them are kind of heavy. Uh, but if I'm looking for one that has great characters, has some really great drama, has some great comedy, great score, The Fugitive, I, I, would, I would watch that for the rest of my life. I don't care! Uh, Maria asks, what do you think about the Oscars awards? Okay, so I don't actually understand the just vehement hate of La La Land and maybe it's because I grew up on musicals from the 50s and like I understand the whole aesthetic to the whole thing that movie was a love letter to old Hollywood and I think if anything it made a commentary on the the constant need to go back and use nostalgia but either way I feel like the Oscar politics has kind of overshadowed both La La Land and Moonlight I guess Moonlight would win Best Picture you're going for a rival upset I'm going for Moonlight Moonlight you guys won Best Picture so I won F you guys Although my favorite movie this year was Arrival because I think the themes of Arrival are actually the most important themes right now. Because it's a movie about communication and the dangers of communication. That is so ungodly relevant right now. Big league. But yeah, as far as the award ceremony itself, there are a few gaps, including that really big one at the end. But otherwise, it was probably the most enjoyable Oscar show I've ever, 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 ever seen. Or will see. But yeah, Moonlight, good job. Arrival, you got snubbed yeah. in many categories. And La La Land, I don't get the hate. If you can't enjoy a well-made movie that was a director's passion project, then why are you watching movies? Greg McAllister would Hodor be hired as a doorman at the Ritz?
too soon. Uh, Jenna Petrie, marry me? Well, funny story about that, actually. We did. But you don't remember. So whenever you get the chance, um, call me. Christopher Baker asks, what do you want to do before you die? Probably write a legit score for a feature film. And as a bonus, if I was able to turn it into some kind of a symphonic suite and perform it at a concert hall, that would be like my highest dream come true. David, AKA Super Socks, asks me, what if Brian was Hoodie? Now for those not in the loop, that is a Marble Hornets reference, I would say that was probably something that people would have seen coming despite being in total denial of it. But in reality, the truth is, I'm Hoodie. Maria asks, I have another question. 2016 wasn't a good year specifically for political reasons, but what was your best memory of that year? Your shit to Vancouver doesn't count. Ah, oh, damn. It's kind of hard to narrow down what my favorite memory of 2016 is. So I almost have to say it's a, it's a collection of a lot of little good moments. I think what defines my favorite memories of 2016 is the people that I shared the memories with. So for instance, the friends I went to Utah with, or my friends here at YouTube Space, we've had a lot of great memories there. It's kind of easy to say, obviously, you and I had a lot of great memories. Uh, Brent Coble asks, what have you learned? What have you forgotten? Who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? Can you remove your pinky from my anus? Did Lolan win this picture? Who killed JR? Are you my white tiger? I am your white tiger, Brent. Thank you. Yeah. That was great timing. And finally, Jeff Alexander, if there were a classic movie you'd like to see redone, what would it be? Henceforth, what movie remake you wish didn't happen? Uh, okay, first part of the question, if there was a classic movie I would like to see redone. Growing up as a really huge fan of the Disney live action 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, in many ways it's near perfect, but in many ways it's also unbelievably dated. The motion picture screen explodes with unprecedented power. But again, I'm a film purist, so I like the charm of that, that kind of that 50s aesthetic that they have going on. But at the same time, this is kind of a timeless story, and I feel like you could take the characters in the situation and apply it as an allegory to something happening in our world today. It offers a lot of world building opportunities, which I would like to actually see. So I, I guess it's not much of a remake as much as it would be just a reinterpretation of the source material by Jules Verne. What remake by which didn't happen? Easy. Ghostbusters 2016. When you really think about it, what was the point? What was the ultimate point of that? If Sony Pictures was striving to do some kind of a girl power film while working with a really popular IP, why Ghostbusters? And not only that, the film shit on the original film material and also shat on fans, while at the same time being very unfunny and uncreative in its own right. So there are my answers. Thank you for the questions, everybody. All right. Of course, there's something I should clarify. Um, just because vloggy is over doesn't mean that I'm done with vlogging. I actually love doing this, but I think after doing it every single day for a full month, it's now time to return back to the format where I do it every, like, I don't know, couple of months or so. Because, like, you know, I, I, I have a job. But no, for real, though, there will be future vlogs, just not daily, because holy crap, it's a lot. <laughs>